Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Staffers Unscripted. As you can see, yet again, all three of us are here and ready to give you the best possible pod we can at whatever time of the day it is. So yet again, we just want to thank you. Uh, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Keep supporting the channel. Like I say, we always really appreciate it. No matter if you give us criticism, praise, whatever it is, we really appreciate what you guys feed into this channel. And we're going to continue to try our best to give you guys the best that we possibly can. Um, and obviously we know, guys, Champions Cup coming up this weekend, um, a tournament that South Africans are starting to get used to. Um, people don't realize, if, if, if you watch a lot of football, this is the comparison to the Champions League. Uh, this is a big thing. And I, I don't know, personally, guys, if the Bulls could win this, this is massive. And if the Stormers can win it, it's massive as well. So... I really want South African teams to do well. So we're going to get into a bit of a prediction video for the Champions Cup this weekend. And yeah, are you guys excited for this weekend's games or I, feeling I, a bit I, nervous? I know we, we always bant each other in terms of Bulls versus Stormers and stuff. But I think Brett would agree. This is like the one tournament that we actually want the Bulls also to perform in. Um, seeing that neither one of our, our teams have really have, have won it or performed really well in it. I know we, we got to the quarters last season, um, but we want the South African boys to do well just to have some bragging rights with it as well. Because obviously, if the Bulls win it, we'll take it as a South African victory. But if the Bulls and the Stormers win it back to back and stuff, then you know we would want each other to do shit again. But for now, because we're still new to it, we'll support each other. So, yeah, we, 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 are, we are supporting the Bulls like our own. My only problem with with that is that I'm still I still can't have a conversation with a rational bull supporter about any rugby because they just remind me that in 1992 or when was it 2010 that you guys won Super Rugby, I still get reminded about it and that's like yo oh, guys. But you don't think Revan is a rational bull supporter? Yeah, no, he's he's actually one of the good ones. So that's why he's still on this pod. Otherwise, we would have booted him long ago. It's actually, because he yeah. he's a Stormers fanboy. If he wasn't, he is, even, uh, if he wasn't born there, he would have been a Stormers fan. You know, he enjoys the Stormers game a lot more than he enjoys he enjoys the Bulls game. No, I mean, he gets more like... frustrated with the Stormers games on our WhatsApp group than he does about the Bulls. The Bulls exactly, yeah. every now and then a, a swear word or two, but Stormers, why is this so frustrating? Let's we, spoke, we, spoke about, we spoke about buying Ruan or Kia, maybe. Brett's there, please buy, please buy Dobbo. Please buy Dobbo. I just yeah. want Dobbo. Just something, just want something like rugby going, right? Yeah. 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 Guys, you guys, I, you guys. I actually, up, I'm, I'm quite annoyed with the fixtures. So, I'm one of those people that I only realized it quite late. Like we play, everyone's playing each other that they played in the pool. What, oh, what's the point realize. of that? <laughs> yeah, no, they've really messed this up. Uh, I genuinely don't understand how they got this right. So if I can just put it into context, the Bulls are playing the same team that they played in the groups. The Stormers are, Leinster are playing the same team. Northampton are playing the same team. And I'm, oh, Bordeaux are playing the same team. Mm -hmm. Everyone is basically, I think there's one where the, it's a different. And it was, all came down to um, the highest ranked team played 16th. But of course, you don't realize you probably first is going to play fourth in their own pool, probably. Like, that's just how it's going to yeah. work. So it is a bit of a mess, but it is what it is. And I think we'll get into predictions now, but I generally think the two of us, um, I think the two teams are safe to say. Okay, touch wood. But I think we, 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 we do have a bit of a a chance to get through to the next round. Let's just say that because we are both at home. Um, so I'm just going to say that. Um, but we'll start off with Friday night's game. Um, first off, we have Harlequins versus Glasgow Warriors. Harlequins being at home. Um, thoughts on that, guys? I'll go. I'm thinking... <laughs> that, now, except for the Stormers and La Rochelle, because there's a lot of talk around that game. I think this could be one of the most exciting games to watch this weekend. Like, I'll be glued to the TV watching this. Um, not in terms of seeing the best game, but I think both teams are a bit defensively vulnerable. And I think this is a high, high scoring game. I think I think Harlequins have got it, in my opinion. Uh, Andre Estrazen and, and Marcus Smith. 
um, that combination deadly. But I, I'm predicting like a 40 to 30 point victory for Harlequins. Obviously, they're playing at home as well. But I'm looking, I'm so looking forward to this game. I think this is going to be pure running rugby. Um, we know Glasgow love to run the ball. They've had a great URC season so far. Um, I think it won't be the end of the world for them to drop out of this season just because they can actually go on and focus on the URC as well because they've been doing it so well in it. Um, where Harlequins will probably want to focus on this one a bit more. But I think this, this is a game full of joy to watch. Yeah, so Tyron Green is also there. Um, and he's yeah. slowly but surely going under the radar as one of the best players in the Prem at the moment. Um, so I think he's knocking on Rassi's... On, on Rassi's door, they're like, hey, Tom, you need to look um, this side because I'm doing shit, yeah. Um, so that's also, that's that's a key factor as well. But I'm not saying that Quinns are going to win. I'm going with a Glasgow win. I think that their performance last weekend, I was mesmerized by some of the fluency in that Glasgow side. Um, so my prediction is different. I'm going um, Glasgow by about five points. Would you agree? It's a high-scoring game. Yeah, no, yeah. I thought you said, I thought you said Harlequins are going to win by thirty or forty points. No, 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 forty points to thirty, so ten points. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, no. Um, I, I'm on the side of casual, yeah, just purely because, like, I'm not, not nothing against Glasgow. I think Glasgow are a good side. I just think the home advantage for Harlequins will be a bit of a a help for them and obviously we know uh, Marcus Smith for Harlequins is a player that is a force to be reckoned with I think internationally he has his on and off moments but for Harlequins he is a fantastic player and has a great inside center next to him and Andre Estazen. Um and I think that will get them over the line I think Harlequins will probably get just get that extra support and I just see them also winning this game by five points, maybe 10 points. High scoring, I can see as well, because we know both sides aren't these layback type of sides. They are going to attack. Um, but also, Quinn's look, they they obviously went up against Bath this past weekend, and things went, but Pesh, they, they were obviously massively, I, I can't remember how the situation was, but um, there was a bit of controversy with, with uh, a yellow card that came on a bit earlier. Will they react in a positive way? Um, a little bit. As we all... Four minutes. Come yeah, four, on, four yeah, minutes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you never know. Obviously, negativity to, around the club can sometimes cause players to put in a bad performance. But I, I, I do see Harlequins taking that one. Uh, but Jones. next up, we move. Mm, Hugh Jones, yeah. I mean, actually, is it is it Hugh Jones against Andre Estes in this, basically? Is he inside or is he 13 for Glasgow? Yeah, he's 13. Uh, it would be like it would be good to see him go up against Andre. Yeah. But anyway, moving on to Saturday, um, Bulls versus Leon. Hot past one in the afternoon. Pretoria. It's hot. It, it's above altitude. Look, um, Brett, you can go first since you. Please, can I go first? Yes, I want to go first because I think this is going to be a, an absolute hiding. I think that. It's it's just just starting to cool down in in Gauteng, um, in Pretoria, but it's still blistering hot. And you don't win at Loftus. People, I've been saying this for pretty much my whole life. Loftus is a fortress, and to come from France to Loftus to think that you're going to even compete, not happening. Remember, the Bulls nearly blew Leon away with their third string team at Leon's Leon's uh, field. What's it in the in the in the pool stages? I, mm. I agree with Brett fully. This is going to be a demolition job. You've got the hungry Bulls again. Um, I think they'll they'll have a statement bounce back victory after that game against Leinster. They had a decent first half performance, got smashed in the second half, and I think that's kind of what the Bulls needed. Um, to, to really tell them, okay, listen, this is the level that is expected of us. Um, we we disappointed ourselves. We disappointed a lot of South African fans. Um, and we are going to, we're going out there to prove a point. 
and I agree fully with Brett. This is that this is not going to be a smash and grab. This is going to be a smash, stomp on your head, spit on your face, stand over <laughs> you, and literally just watch you die on the field. That is that is what it's going to feel like for for Leon. I can't see them getting close. I'm going Bulls by at least 22 points. Um, yeah, Leon, pack your bags, stay there, or unpack your bags, yeah. stay in Leon. <laughs> um, I'm actually for once I'm gonna bring out the the delusional Bulls fan in me. Um, yeah, Bulls are gonna annihilate these Oaks, I, and I truly do believe that. I think I, well, I don't know when last I've had the confidence to say Bulls are gonna annihilate the team because past few seasons, every time I get a bit confident, they let me down. But I generally think, yeah, I think at, especially at that altitude during the day, I genuinely, like the Bulls, if they feel their stronger side and whether it's second string as well, I just think Loftus is a fortress at the moment. And look, it's going to be ugly for Leon. I do. I can see Leon probably getting maybe one or two tries, maybe like just because we're so focused on attack that they might get a breakaway try or two. But I really see the Bulls winning this one by 25 points or more. Um, so I'm more yeah, confident that... about the Bulls winning this game than Leinster beating Leicester Tigers. Your oh, mic is sure. making sounds. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Watch that vibration, son. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I think just genuinely, like, I don't, I don't know, I don't see a world in where the Bulls lose this game. If they do. My goodness, then I don't know what to say, but that's not going to happen anyway. Then there's not much Jake White out again. <laughs> Look, there's not much else to say about that game because Bulls are clear favorites and they should win this game. I know there's always the underdog story, but this is a bit different in my opinion. Um, so we'll move on to the next one where it's an all prem clash with Exeter playing Bath in Exeter. I'm going to go first in this one because uh, just because I purely think Bath are also going to get the win away in this one. And I say this because I don't think Exeter have been all that good this season, even in the Champions Cup and in the Prem. I don't think they've been fantastic. And I genuinely think Bath have been phenomenal. I mean, that Finn Russell has really helped Bath really fight their way up in that top four in the Prem and looking for a playoff position there. So I see Bath continuing their continuity and they're just going to go out there and I think they're going to deliver and get the win over Exeter. I think it will be a, a tight-ish game, but I can see Bath winning this one by about ten points. Brett, do you want to go first? Yeah, Next. I'm. I I agree with you, but not in the sense that Bath is um, they're doing well. More in the sense that the Exeter side I saw against Sales Sharks this past weekend was. It looked like an amateur side could beat them. It was absolutely appalling rugby. It, you can't tell me there's going to be a massive bounce back from one week to the next after that poor performance. That might improve like a little bit, but that's not going to even help them. I think that it's going to be a boss victory by at least 15 points. I am calling the upset victory. I think Exeter get it done. I'm not even trying to banter. Yeah, I think Exeter has been good throughout the season or decent throughout the season. I've had a little dip now, but I think that was I think that was the first game back for the likes of Henry Slade and a and a Waboso after the Six Nations. I think they'll be hungry for this game. Um, yeah, and I just don't rate Bath that well. I I can't slander Finn Russell every time and then say he's going to beat Exeter. So no, I'm going <laughs> Exeter. To scrape past by like a <laughs> two point victory. <laughs> Dude, wow. yeah, that's, that's fair. That's fair. But I, let's get I'm on. I'm not to saying I'm believing you. it, but I would like to. I would like it to happen like that. Yeah. Well, uh, let's just say if Exeter do win, whoever gets him in the quarterfinal will be very happy. Let's just say that. People um, saying anyway. Finn Russell is hungry. He's hungry. The only thing he's hungry for is food. The guy's time is just getting bigger and bigger. I'm not having... Yeah, that, that, looks, so out of that looks terrible. Yeah, exactly. No. Oh, goodness. We love some fun roasting here on Safa's Unscripted. <laughs> he not likes some roasting too. as well. <laughs> 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 he loves some roast, roast lamb on a Sunday afternoon. Anyway, moving on. Um, 
big game for you guys. I think this is personally, it's one of two that I believe is the game of the weekend. Probably number one, I'm biased because I'm a Saffir. But Stormers versus La Rochelle in Cape Town. I think this is a massive game. As we all know, La Rochelle haven't been the exact same size as what they were last season, but they are still the European champions at the moment as it stands. And for the Stormers to go out there and deliver a big performance, hopefully it can be improved on the Ulster one because if they perform like they did against Ulster, I think there's something coming for them. But I think that will... I I genuinely think the Stormers will get it right. And I can see Stormers winning this one by, I know it was a one point Marnie Libok last minute kick to win it the last time. But this time I think it's a bit more comfortable and I can see the Stormers winning this one by eight, eight points, maybe nine. I genuinely think that they have it in them. I think they'll be fired up, but obviously they'll be disappointed in the Ulster performance and I see them bouncing back. So casual, you give us your thoughts on your team. The first time was so nice, we had to do it twice. I'm going Stormers by one point again. Yo. I'm just kidding. I'm going Stormers by 11 points. I think we... <laughs> statement victory. Listen, La Rochelle can't go from nearly falling out in the group stages to beating us in the round of 16. Okay, I think our guys are still hungry for this one. We've got Frans Malherbe back. We saw the difference it made when Frans Malherbe was on the beach. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we've got Dion Fury back. Um, Daimani will be ready. Ivan Roos on form again. Mani Libok had a shocking first half, but you see what you, you saw what he could do in the second half. Um, I don't think we play around with the centers again with, with Dan Duplessis on the outside center. I think we're going Dan Dupe on the inside center. I would go Artenberg on the outside center. Give me Damien Willems, the best player to ever grace this earth on fullback. Um, and listen. The banter aside, we, we can't beat around the bush. La Rochelle hasn't been the same team they were last season. I haven't seen a guy at a worse Six Nations than what Dante had. Have you ever seen a guy play a worse tournament than Dante, than Dante did? He looked like a prop on inside centre. He lost a step. He lost his physicality. I'm not having La Rochelle beat us this time. I think we we did brilliant to beat them in the first time. After, after we lost five games in a row, we still managed to beat them. I think our crowd will be up for it. The back stadium, the boys are bringing it home. Or oh, well, we're bringing the whole trophy, the, the the whole thing home. But we're winning this game, okay? Yeah. Well, you said you haven't seen a worse player than Dante in Six Nations. I that's for me Sergio Parisa every year that he played. But not, <laughs> that's not anything about him. Um, I do, however. I, I, I'm not with you guys on this page. So, obviously, everyone knows I'm a Stormers fan, but I'm extremely nervous for this game. I felt that the game against Edinburgh and the game against Ulster, the Stormers had too many lapses of concentration that they they let in, like they slipped a few tackles or they let in an easy try here and there. And if they don't fix that, the only thing that I think that can save the Stormers is home field advantage maybe the the climax or something but i'm going with stormers by one wow so you're going with the first one so nice i had to do it i had to do it twice 100 percent. when you said it i was like oh yes now i'm gonna have to say me too <laughs> <laughs> look i think you obviously yeah la rochelle are obviously going to be up for this because obviously you never want to lose to a team that you lost to in the pool stages again even if and and they'll know it was by one point that will fire them up but the major thing here is they are the defending champions and as a defending champion if you're going to go out go out on your sword like put up a fight and i'm sure that's what they're going to do um but like i said i just i think the stormers they they are due a good performance and i think it's coming soon um but just a question for you guys uh ben loader Obviously, fantastic when he came on against Ulster. Would you start. start him? At, do you start him at wing? The both of yeah. you? Would you do that? I'm going Ben Loder on the wing, Arsenberg on outside centre. Yeah, same. Ooh. Okay, and then Dan with the at twelve, obviously. Yeah, yeah but then so I, was much need, at 12. I need a guy like Zas to not drop easy balls like he did against Ulster. Um, I need. We need. So nobody breaks tackles for me. The only guy I can think of that breaks 
simple tackles from close distance like Zas does is Mark Tillia. That that like in a very small space he breaks tackles. It makes no sense to me. It just it just happens. And mm. I need Zas at his best because he's going up against a very good um, back three. I mean, uh, Raymond Rule and and Dylan Lates, they are not – those are Springboks. So, we just need to know that it's not going to be easy. Absolutely. Uh, I completely agree. I just, I just see Stormers taking advantage towards the end just purely because, you know, it is their home ground, home crowd. I just think that towards the end, the Stormers will take it to another level that La Rochelle can't match. Um, but any last thoughts on your guys' team there, or are we happy to move on to the next game? Yeah, move on. Happy. Everyone cool. needs to be cool. seen. Okay. Next up, Bordeaux Bagels versus Saracens. Now, if this juicy. was... It is a juicy game, to be fair. And Bordeaux are at home. Now, I don't know if this is the upset victory at the moment, but you guys might think it is. I genuinely, if this was in the group stages, obviously I'm saying Bordeaux would win this comfortably. And, and But now I've got a feeling Saracens have an opportunity to go there and win. I think Saracens are on their way to fixing their situation. As we all saw, they weren't the Saracens we knew in the group stages. Obviously the Bulls trampling them at Loftus. Um, obviously losing other games as well. Weren't doing so great in the Prem. But I can see Saracens sneaking a win here. I just have that feeling. I feel like Saracens have the experience in this tournament to get them over the line. Um, they've been here before. They've done it before. And that experience is more than Bordeaux can give. And that's why I just think Saracens could sneak a little win here. I don't know what... Uh, Brett, what, what, what do you say? I'm, I'm in full agreement with you because um, when I watch Saracens... So if, if I watch Prem... It's because Saracens are playing. It's uh, one of the only teams that I actually can get behind because they remind me of a of a ruthless Springboks Springbox setup. They know how to win finals, and when it comes to playoff games, it's it's what they do well. Um, they can have a shocking pool stage, but they switch on when. It, oh, that's such a cliche to say, but they do switch on when it comes to playoff games. So I'm going. I'm also saying Saracens, but not by much, um, by less than five. Yeah, I'm go I'm going different. I've, I've still got Bordeaux to win it, but I'm not saying that with with any confidence. I'm just taking it on pure form that we've seen the whole the whole tournament this far. The thing is, just like Saracens have been so hot and cold, so you don't know if they if they turn it on, they could really put Bordeaux under the pump, and if they cold, they could lose by a country mile. Right, so it's so weird that they are the epitome or fall under the bracket of just like rugby heritage when it comes to when it comes down to the business end of the season, they really know how to how to embrace the moment. It's almost like the same with South Africa or New Zealand. Like you can never write off that team when it's all on the line to play for. So that that's kind of the the mindset that Saracens remind me of. Obviously, they had a brilliant performance against Harlequins, blew them out of the water. And then got spanked by Northampton Saints. Now Saints is no <laughs> walkover victory. Saints yeah. uh, have have been a country mile above everyone else in the prem. But just the way they got smashed there at the end and stuff, um, it's tough to to go for Saracens when I've seen Bordeaux. Bordeaux has been such a likable team throughout. So I'm also going with this one just more like that. I like Bordeaux more than Saracens, but I wouldn't be surprised with the upset victory either way. I'm going. I'm going two points either way. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely think it will be a close game. So I think all three of us have valid shots there. But next up, guys, this is probably the other... Okay, I said there were two. I think there's three. This is the second. Um, I think this is the second game of the weekend. Uh, Leinster versus Leicester. In Leinster, I think this is going... To, I think Leicester will put up a better performance than the Bulls did. Purely because it's still in that region i think they're used to maybe traveling over to ireland it's not far of a travel um and I, I'm, not, well. mm, I'm not using a travel thing as an excuse as to why the balls lost the balls lost fair and square but i just think <laughs> that that aspect helps a tiny bit and i just think leicester is filled with uh internationals as well just like leinster is maybe not as much as leinster but there are a lot of internationals in that leicester side but ultimately, 
look, Leinster, personally, I don't believe they'll they'll slip up here. I do think that the only place I can sense a slip up is semi-final slash final. That's the only time I can really sense a Leinster slip up because we're just going off history here. I mean, they have won this tournament before, but um, if we're just going off, and again, maybe we're going to get ridiculed for this, but that Irish culture of losing when it's when it's very, very important, it can't be denied. And that's not a shot. It's just that's a fact. Um, and Heritage. I, I, <laughs> rugby heritage, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I genuinely I see Leinster winning this one. I see them winning it by 10 or more. I do think it will be comfortable. But towards the end, I can see Leinster really putting the put, foot to the pedal and taking it away. So, casual, thoughts on that? I would have predicted a bit closer game before this weekend. But after this weekend, where we saw what Leinster did with the Bulls, they didn't play with their food. And what Leicester Tigers <laughs> struggle to do with Newcastle Falcons, the Falcons who haven't won a single game. Le Leicester Tigers had to take them to 99 minutes. They played a 99 minutes game of rugby against the lowest ranked team. Um, I don't think it's going to be a blowout victory because obviously there's enough South Africans in the in the Tigers team to to keep them in the hunt. Um, but I'm also predicting an easy 12 point victory to to Leinster. No, more than 12. Let's say 14. Feels like a big jump between 12 and 14. Um, but I'm going Leinster to still take it. I don't think it's going to be like a 30-point game. But the Tigers, I've got no confidence in them at the moment. Yeah, I've, I'm I'm going with a complete blowout of um, the Tigers are going to go home with their tails between their legs. It's going to be one of those games that they want to forget very quickly. That subpar Leinster side, what they did to the Bulls in that second half, blew my mind. I I was absolutely absolutely flabbergasted on how they played when that bench came on. And they're obviously going to start with that bench. So I can't see it being close. I don't think it's going to be a game that Leinster's going to say, well, at least we got to try. So it's going to be something like, I'm saying by more than 30 points. And, and the thing is, I genuinely, if Leinster are on that, on where they are just ruthless and they keep going and going and going and they, their flow and their rhythm gets going, I genuinely think it could get very ugly for Leicester. And obviously it hurts to say that because we have Andre Pollard there, we have Jasper Visa, we have other Saffers there as well. But, and, and obviously Jasper Visa, one of my favorites, but I just, I think. Le Le Leinster are just another level at the moment compared to Leicester and it's going to show and especially because Leinster are at home I just think Leicester need to be awake otherwise we saw what happened to the Bulls and it can turn very ugly very quick so that is a massive possibility but moving on to Sunday and for me like this is also a big game purely because I have a soft spot for this team and they are doing very well in the Prem and they're playing the URC champions. There is Northampton Saints versus Munster. I think this is the third and final big game of the weekend. The pool game of this game was fantastic. I really enjoyed the pool game that these two played in together. It was very intense. It was up and down. Uh, Northampton at a point looked like they were going to struggle and then Munster started to struggle and Northampton took control. So I genuinely believe that Northampton are going to take this one and I think they're going to take it comfortably because they are at home. Also, I don't know if you guys have seen Achias Neyman's fitness has been questioned at the moment yet again. Um, possibly not going to even play this weekend for Munster due to an injury or fitness issues. Um, look, I, I'm sure Munster fans absolutely despise the guy at this point. He's moving to their biggest rivals. He barely plays for them. And he wins World Cups against their side. So, look, this is not great for Munster. But, yeah, I'm happy to say that Northampton, because I have a soft spot for them, they will take this one. And, Brett, give us your thoughts on what's going to happen there. Yeah, I don't have a soft spot for Saints. But I do agree that the score is going to be um, in Saints' favour. Because um, also Saints is a good goodish playoff side. And when it comes to... 
against the run of play, that's where Munster shines. And Saints don't often make silly mistakes like the teams that Munster have been playing recently do. So I think that they're not going to be able to to um, like fish off of mistakes and get that nasty little intercept try or a whatever try. So I think I think Saints have this game, um, but not by a lot because Munster obviously is also a good playoff side. So um, although I'm hitting cliche after cliche, uh, I do, however, think that Saints have this have this game by five points. Yeah, Mun Munster is one of those teams that you consider as as rugby royalty, especially for these Northern Hemisphere teams. Like they've won it all. Uh, they've always been a brilliant team, but, but I'm just going purely on form. There's no emotional involvement from our side. Um, Munster is getting better this game. They haven't made light work of any team. They've struggled against the Ospreys. They struggled against Cardiff. Um, and you str if you struggle against those teams and you go up against Northampton Saints that made light work of the likes of Saracens and every other team they've come up against, you are in for a very, very long night. So I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm going Saints by 16 points, um, really blowing Munster out of the water. I can't see Munster keeping up with the pace that uh, Saints put out there. Um, mm. Yeah, that's all I have to say with, with this one, really. At the start, it was like, okay, this this could be the game where we, we have an upset victory. And, and now I'm just like, it's all all Saints. Yeah, that's I, I generally... another 12 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, gen I generally just don't see anything other than a Northampton win. I can't see it. But then that takes us to the last game of the weekend. Uh, French, um, all French clash, Toulouse versus Racing 92. See ya, Kulisi. Good to, good to see him playing again there. Um, but honestly, I don't think that will matter at all. Um, I think Toulouse is going to win this one. Anton Dupont has come back from the sevens and just, again, decided to shine. So, look, I think you could put Anton Dupont on that field alone against Racing 92 and you'll win the game for, for Racing, I mean, for Toulouse. Just because uh, his, his impact and his ability to change games for Toulouse is on another level. Um, if I'm correct, Intermac is back. I don't know yeah, if he's they, they, they doubt that he's going to start. He might be in the okay. squad, but I don't think he's starting. Okay, well, that, that's good news for French fans. I mean, it will be good to see uh, Anton Dupont and Intermac obviously starting to get their flow and their, their partnership back together. But, Casual, your thoughts on how this game turns out and what do you okay. see happening? This one I will really keep short and sweet. Racing, thank you for coming. Hopefully, you'll do better next season uh, to lose by 25 to 30 points. I think it's a blowout victory to Pond Masterclass once again. Uh, people are seeing to lose as one of the favorites, and I agree with it. I see Racing as one of the worst teams at the moment. There you go. Yeah, I, what he said, except for the fact that I don't think that score is going to be that high. I think that to lose will win definitely, but by 12 points because I. I can't see to lose like going for that blowout victory. It's not in their style. They like to toy with teams, like be flashy and toy with teams. So I think it's going to be by 10 to 12 points. Well, they smashed yeah. all the points. Yeah. At the soup. Yeah. That's yeah. not difficult. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, just ask the Stormers how it feels to travel. Uh, to the prem sides in a friendly, and even they got the job done. So, you know, we all love it up there in the prem. But anyway, um, ladies and gents, oh, let me just give my thoughts quickly. Uh, to, to not that it matters. I mean, this new, what does he know? Um, but to lose versus Racing 92, I genuinely think to lose takes this one. I'm gonna meet in the middle. Casual says 25, Brett says 12. Oh, say 12. I'm going to say 18. That's where I'm going to stick. I'm going to say to lose by 18. And then that leaves a safe bet for all of us to, one of us to be right. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much again for supporting this channel. That brings the end to this episode. Please hit us with your predictions in the comments. Interact with us. You know, we love it when you interact with us, especially when you call us names and uh, give us funny roasts. We really appreciate it. And yeah, we'll see you guys soon. And that's us for today.
Cheers. Cheers. Bye.